Morning all, hi. Welcome to your next criminology video. Uh, this one is for unit two and it's at the beginning. So it is unit two, 1.1. So um, just to remind you, this is uh, structured slightly differently to the unit one that you're familiar with. Um, we don't know the situation that's going to happen in summer as far as your assessment and your exams. However, this is an exam uh, part of your criminology course. So what that means is if everything was going as normal and to plan, you would sit in the exam hall and get a paper with unseen questions before, four markers, five markers, three markers, etc. And you would read the question and write your answer underneath. And so this is something that we're going to practice and develop as we do this unit together. So we're going to practice how to read questions, how to answer them properly, how to write the, how to give examples, how to do enough analysis, etc, etc. So it's just to being aware though that this is not an exam you can take notes or grid sheets into this is something that you have to actually revise and memorize and then answer those questions so without further ado let's get started on the powerpoint so i'll just make myself smaller that should just about do it make us bigger and let's get going so unit 2 1.1 Please do write your notes on all of these different slides. Please, please keep them detailed into the excellent standard that you're used to writing. Um, this, this topic focuses on understanding the social construction of criminality and comparing criminal behaviour and deviance. Now, these are words that we are familiar with. We've come across the words crime and deviance before, but we're really going to dig down into these uh, in this topic. So I'm going to set you a Padlet up and I would like you to share your thoughts on a couple of examples. So the first example I would like you to put your thoughts about is supermarkets. What is expected and not expected behaviour when shopping in the supermarket? So what rules do we follow in the supermarket, for example, at the checkout or in the queue? So can you think of some examples of expected behaviour and can you give examples of unacceptable behaviour? behavior and so how do you then feel if people then don't do this so obviously the obvious example is you're in the queue and someone jumps ahead of you do you say something do you say excuse me i was next do you expect the checkout person to notice and say something how 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 do you deal with that situation how does it make you feel so can you think of any other examples of what is expected and unacceptable behaviour. I would also like you to have a go at doing one for the classroom. And um, what about in the classroom? Are there expected rules of behaviour here as well? So what are the rules? So what's expected in the classroom and what's unacceptable behaviour in a classroom? And again, why do we have these rules? Why is there, why is there rules in the classroom? And obviously with lockdown, covid um, social distancing etc both of these situations both the supermarket and a classroom have even more rules and have even more unacceptable behaviors now so you can write about those as well those are really good examples so how do we judge whether behavior is acceptable or not in society so there are four different ways that we judge whether something is acceptable or not and you need to write all four of these down so the first are the norms rules are socially accepted standards and expectations that govern people's behavior in certain circumstances so for example how you might show respect to elders these keep deviant behavior under control so it's basically what is and is not expected by society Norms are quite specific and vary counter culture. So we wear black at funerals, for example, whereas in China they wear white. So norms are what's socially acceptable within the culture that you're in. Values. These are principles or guidelines with how you should live your life. They are more general than norms. So norms are quite specific, whereas values are more general uh, about what society thinks is good and bad. So these can vary again between cultures, but the same applies to everybody within that culture. So, for example, respect for human life, accumulating wealth, how you then distribute your wealth. So, for example, we distribute our wealth through the tax system, etc. Um, so this is the idea that these are values that... It might be culture based still, but they're far more general than the norms, which would be quite specific. Moral codes. 
These are lists or sets of rules that an individual group, organisation or community might live by. They can be written or unwritten. So, for example, the police have codes of ethics. We have uh, codes at college. So we have things that you should and should not do at college. These are moral codes that you follow. Finally, deviance, behaviour that differs from the norm. Different, strange, out of the ordinary. Can be good, odd or bad. So, obviously there's quite a lot of information on that slide. Please do pause it, fill out your notes, get it all down. You might want to highlight the bits that make them different because obviously they are quite similar to those four, but you do need to learn them. You do need to know what the difference is. So try and find a way to make your notes so, so that you can interact and revise them properly. Right, so deviance, deviance in a bit more detail. Deviants can be good, odd or bad. So good, giving away nearly all your money to charity. That's not something that people do very often. So it's out of the norm, but it's a good out of the norm. Odd, wearing your pants on your head. So, for example, or um, walking around a, with no top on during winter. These things are odd. They're deviant because they're against the norm and people would go... That's a bit strange. Um, bad, attacking someone with a knife. So something that is deviance, that is bad, is when it might hurt somebody. Um, and obviously, criminologists, that's us, uh, we're interested in the last one. We're interested in the bad deviance. So there are certain sanctions that happen against deviance. So there are formal sanctions. These are imposed by authorities such as the police, court or schools, the fines, prison, detentions or exclusion. Informal could be things like frowning on behaviour. When, so when someone does something, tutting, you know, or name calling or telling someone off, grounding a child or refusing to speak to somebody. So if somebody... Um, has a behaviour that you don't agree with or, or you think is deviant, just stop in talking to them. Stop that communication. Sanctions can also be positive, though. So medals for bravery or praise if the deviant behaviour is seen as good. So, for example, there's been a lot of deviant behaviour during lockdown. So, for example, um, Sir Tom, with his uh, doing his walk and raising all of that money for the NHS, uh, that's deviant. That's very out of the norm that somebody can raise that much money through the, the uh, that age as well that isn't on these public forums. You know, he, he's not a Instagram or Facebook famous. You know, he's not got a reality TV show. He just walked and raised money. And so that's quite deviant. But because of his deviance, he won, an, he won a medal. He was knighted, etc. But you need to note that all sanctions, all of them, good, bad, formal, informal, are all forms of social control, the way that you are controlled by society. Now, this is something called behaviourism. We'll have a look at behaviourism later down in your time on criminology. But basically, you can manipulate somebody's behaviour by positive or negative reward. So this is the idea that you can get people to do what you want them to do by positively reinforcing it or positively sanctioning it whereas if you don't want people to do it you negatively do it through formal or informal sanctions so just a little bit of a side note there for you right so what do you think some discussion questions for you what principles beliefs and values do you feel you should live by can you think of any norms and values or moral codes that have changed over the years? And if your friend let you down in some way, what informal sanctions might you use? Again, I'm going to pop them on the Padlet because I'd love to hear your thoughts on those different things. I think for me, if my friend lets me down, I'm one of these, I, I'm a festerer. It festers. I, I, I wish I was one of these people that would just go straight in and say, look, you've upset me uh, and get it all out there. I don't, I fester and think, oh, it'll go away. It'll go away. And then it obviously bubbles over eventually. So I'm a festerer. So how would you deal with uh, your friend? You know, would you ignore them? Would you delete their numbers? Would you tell them? So how would, how would you deal with a friend if they let you down. All right, so what is a crime? Basically, 
if a society decides something is a crime, then it becomes one. So this process, as we know from our unit one, is very, very long. But as society deems something so deviant that it's a crime, it then usually eventually becomes a crime legally. The fundamental definition is an act that is considered so wrong that the state has to intervene in some way to forbid or punish it. An act that involves a serious harmful wrong against society. But defining crime isn't quite this straightforward and this is something that the examiners want you to know about the difficulties of the def definition of crime. Why is crime difficult to define? So you have a standard fundamental definition but defin defining crime is far more complicated than that so that's what we're going to have a look at now. So there are two definitions first of all of crime. There is your social definition of crime and your legal definition of crime. Social definition of crime. What a community says is a crime and a wrong against it. This means there can be differences between cultures and over time. E.g. for example at 14 you can marry in the state of Utah in America whereas that is illegal over here in the UK. So a community says what is a crime and then and then the wrong comes against that. So they say what is a crime and a wrong um, then develops and so this might differ over the cultures, this might differ over societies over time. So what was um, wrong or a crime 20 years ago, might not be today, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Maybe ask your parents or your grandparents if there are crimes that are new to them that have come in that weren't when they were children or anything that was a crime when they were a child that's allowed today. So see what they say about that. Legal. Sorry, my, uh, oh, oh. let it wake up. Legal. By law, a crime is an act where there is two things, A and B. You need to know these. Actus reus. This is Latin for the guilty act. This is the act. Mens rea is Latin for the guilty mind. Act, intention. You have the act, actus reus, mind, mens rea. So a crime is an act which the law forbids and must be done with a bad intention, a guilty mind. So for example, person A shoots person B through the heart. Actus reus is the shooting. B, mens rea, is the shot through the heart with the intention to kill. So if you just shot them in the leg and they died, that isn't necessarily an intention to kill. Whereas through the heart, you know that you're going to die. So that's an intention to kill. So heart is the act, the shooting, the actual shot is the act. The intention is through the heart to kill. So legal definition of crime, mens rea. There are some exceptions, though, to the legal definition where mens rea is not required. So, for example, if a person neglects health and safety and someone, therefore, is harmed. Or, for example, the pret manger case. Now, if you don't know the pret manger case, you might want to have a look into it. Um, very, It's a very, very sad case, actually. Um, but um, if I remember, it is where uh, a young girl who is a teenager, I don't think she's very different from your age, um, she was um, allergic to nuts, so she was had a high reaction and allergy to nuts. She went to pret manger or is it sesame seed? Something like that, something that one of the very serious allergies. She went to pret manger to, I think, get a sandwich, and it, and it said on it, no nut content, etc. She ate it, had, an, um, had, a, had a, a reaction, um, her EpiPen wouldn't work, and she died um, and whilst on the the packaging it said not in con uh, you know has no nuts present etc you don't know what where it's been made if someone has then touched something with nuts and then touched that sandwich etc so the pret a case is a very very interesting one there was no intention there to cause this girl harm but somebody still died so do check that one out because it's a very very good case to use
Sorry, folks, I don't want to keep pressing it because then it'll go ahead. There we go. So this is called strict liability, where the consequences are so serious, mens rea is not required. So obviously in this situation, there was no intention. There was no mens rea there, but it's still something to be taken so seriously because somebody has died. So this is strict liability. Also, if a person acts in self-defence, actus reus and mens rea may, uh, may be present, but the person may not be found guilty. All right, so over to you. And that's the first part. So this that should take you your first lesson to do with these two activities. Um, and so you can then stop here for your first lesson. Um, I want you to watch the two short, um, well, the first short clip is only about two and a half minutes long, and then the second is a website, and I'd like you to answer these questions. So for the first clip on YouTube, at the start of the clip, what do you think the woman is thinking about the Asian man? When the group of police officers get out of the car, what do you think they are chasing? Oh, sorry, who do you think they are chasing? Who are they actually chasing? Uh, should be a question mark there, sorry. Um, what is the person they catch carrying? And then I'd like you to write a brief summary of what the clip shows about stereotyping and prejudice. What are some people stereotyped as deviant while others are not? Uh, it should be why again. Why are some people stereotyped as deviant whilst others are not? So please write some notes with, with that response to that YouTube video. But as I said, the YouTube video is only about two and a half minutes long, so it's not long at all. Second, I want you to use this website and I would like you to do some research. Um, when were homosexual acts between men decriminalised and what was then the age restriction? When was homosexuality decriminalised in Scotland, the Isle of Man, Northern Ireland? When was the first lesbian and gay pride match held? When did did the first gay MP come out while in office? And from your research, write a brief summary of the norms related to homosexuality have changed over time, including the following age of consent, marriage, employment, childbearing and de uh, discrimination. So, for this lesson, you complete the padlets with your thoughts about what is deviant and not deviant behaviour. I'd like you to do your two answering the questions for these two, please, and to make your notes of what we've done so far. And at that point, you can stop. However, we're not going to. We're going to continue into your next lesson, so then you can pace yourselves as you wish. So, the start of your second part, if my computer... There we go. So, I would now like you to test your knowledge with this mix and match. So you have seven questions there and you need to link them to the right answer in the red. So the red are all jumbled up. You need to basically link the right answer to the right one. So obviously pause your page and have a go and see if you can link them to the right ones. Right, crime and deviance are not always the same. Some behaviour is criminal only, not deviant. Can you think of any examples? So, an example that we've talked about before is illegal downloading of music or speeding. These are criminal. They are against the law. However, people don't really find it that deviant. If you speed and go... 34 miles an hour in a 30, we know you shouldn't do it because you have more chance of causing serious damage, but people still do it and we don't really frown upon it that much. Illegal downloading of material, again, of music, people don't really frown upon it, but it's still a crime. Some behaviour is deviant only, not criminal. Um, shouting in a library, you're not going to get arrested for it, but it's deviant then, but it's not criminal. Uh, hoarding, people that are hoarders, that again is bizarre, it's odd, people frown upon it but it's not against the law. Um, jumping queues in a shop, that's one of the examples I said at the start with the supermarkets, that again is deviant but you're not going to be not going to put in prison for it so can you think of any others? And however some behaviours are both, they are both crimes and deviants. Theft, murder, arson, sexual crimes, all of these are both deviant, so being a paedophile is both deviant and also a crime. So why are crime and deviance difficult to define then? Crime 
Crime, the social definition of crime, it can vary from one society to another. So again, that can make it difficult to define if every society has a different definition. Societies do not agree on what a crime should be. The legal definition is an act should be actus reus and mens rea. However, crimes of strict liability don't have mens rea. Again, go back to the previous slides, go back over those words, maybe do yourself a little uh, glossary of words to help you. So when you use words like actus reus, you can remember what it means. When you use words like strict liability, you can remember what it means, etc. Because you have to start developing your vocabulary and your understanding there. So with that, again, the difficulty in defining crime is because the social is different from the legal. So not only do you have two definitions there, within social, you then have it based on different societies. Within legal, you have mens rea and actus reus, but then some situations like strict liability doesn't have mens rea. So um, again, what definition do you follow? You're not meant to find the answer to this. What an examiner wants you to do is to explore the difficulty, not to say, therefore, the conclusion is this is the definition. No, you're just you just need to be able to say why it's difficult to define crime. Deviance. Values, norms and moral codes can vary between societies and over time. So it's difficult to say what is deviant. So can you think of some examples of behaviour that used to be frowned upon but aren't anymore? And any examples of behaviours that used to be acceptable and aren't anymore? So again, this is the idea that deviance is very hard because it's deviance is very fluid. It constantly changes. Um, I can think of many, many examples of behaviours that used to be frowned upon um, as far as students, as far as what they accept and didn't accept. Um, so over my time of teaching, um, what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable has changed uh, drastically. Um, there's, um, or, uh, for me, everything to do with um, gender, um, gender fluid, non-binary, all of that is very, very new. Um, and a few years ago, that would have been seen more deviant than it is today. For today, it's very, very accepted as it should be. Um, but 10, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I first started teaching, that anything like that was totally out of the norm. So, a scenario. You don't need to write all of this down, but it would be good to do a quick summary and you've got some questions at the bottom. Edna and Sydney are neighbours. Edna is obsessed with cats and has 40 of them. Sydney is a wealthy, elderly punk rocker who always dresses in punk clothes and has spiked rainbow mohawk. Because if you're going to go for it, you're going to go for it. Sydney regularly downloads music and plays it very loud late at night. Edna and Sydney intensely dislike each other and regularly argue. Edna complains about the music and Sydney calls Edna a crazy old woman. Many of the neighbours shout abuse at Edna, saying she is mad and needs locking up. Edna has never reported this to the police. One night, she found graffiti on her door saying, Mad woman. When she, uh, when she heard Sydney's music, she went to his house, armed with a kitchen knife, and stabbed him in the heart. He died shortly after the attack. Using the examples from this scenario, so using examples from this scenario, I want you to explain behaviour that could be described as criminal, deviant or both. So what in this is criminal, what in this is deviant and what in this is both. It's very, very important that you do make these distinctions, that you do recognise how they are different um, in order to be able to, to be able to do your exam. So. You're doing very, very well, folks. Very, very well. There's only a couple more, two or three more slides. Formal sanctions against criminals. There are two types of sanctions. There's formal and non-formal or informal sanctions. So you need to know again about the sanctions. Non-court sanctions are these. Cautions, conditional cautions and penalty notices. Court sanctions are custodial sentences, community sentences, fines and discharge. So we're going to have a look at these in a bit more detail. So, non-court sanctions. This is all fairly straightforward. It's just uh, quite a lot of information, So, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Cautions. For example, graffiti. If you're caught uh, doing graffiti, this is given by the police or the Crown Prosecution Service for minor crimes by people over 10 years old. So you can get a caution, um, anything over 10 years old. You have to admit the offence and agree to the caution. Now, this is 
very very much advised uh, because if you don't you can be then arrested and charged so it's important for these that you do just admit to the offence and agree to the caution but if you are actually caught with a spray can in your hand you've pretty much just got to admit it it can only be used for a first offence and it's not a criminal conviction so you won't get a record um, but can be used as evidence of bad character if you're taken to court for another crime conditional cautions given by the police but include other conditions or restrictions so for example um that you need to attend a drug rehab or an aa meeting or repair damage cars or um go on a driver's awareness course etc if you break the conditions though you can be charged penalty notices such as shoplifting or drunk and disorderly only applies to 18 plus given for minor crimes so shoplifting is a minor crime pay the penalty and you won't be convicted um so that's those so they're obviously called non-court sanctions because you never go to court unless you break the conditions court sanctions so this is when you do go to court Custodial sentences for serious crimes. This is where you're put in prison or a detention centre if you're a young offender. This can be fixed term, so there's a certain number of months and years, or it can be indeterminate, so a parole board will decide based on behaviour what your sentence should be. Community sentences. These are alternatives to prison, but it's where you need to do something. So you might have a probation officer, a curfew, um, you know, when you get the, those things on your ankles. Um, so, excuse me, going on a course such as anger management, regular drug testing, community payback, community service. Fines, you might be fined, so you might have financial penalties. The size of the fine depends on the crime committed and the wealth of the perpetrator. Um, I don't know what you think about that one though. Do you think that's fair? Obviously, you some people won't be able to pay certain crimes, but if they've done the same crime, so if the same person's done the same crime, but one person has a million pounds and one person doesn't, is it fair still to um find them different amounts of money then based on how much money they actually have? Because wouldn't that imply that people that aren't wealthier then could commit more crimes? knowing that they can't they don't have the money to then pay that fine is that really a fair way of doing it should it just be one fine that all pay um again what do you think finally discharge this can be conditional so a person must not commit another offense within a certain time or they can face a custodial sentence so it's conditional on your not doing another crime no sentence or penalty is given so the person might be technically guilty but considered morally blameless so over to you I would like you to answer the following questions. Explain why it's difficult to define the word crime. In an exam, you would get four marks for this. So make sure you write enough or four points in order to be able to get this. This is an explain though. So you don't have to analyse it, but you do have to give examples. Describe two formal sanctions against criminals. So again, this is a describe, give examples. Using examples from the Edna and Sydney scenario, explain behaviour that could be described as criminal criminal, deviant or both and that's five max. So that's the end of your second lesson. So you need to make sure you've wrote all your notes, that you've done your mix and match at the start and that you then have a go at these questions at the end. Make sure you keep your notes so that they're easier to revise from. So highlight them as you go through, keep them nice and spaced out etc. Your final lesson I would like you to watch The Naked Rambler uh, for crime and deviance. So watch the documentary about The Naked Rambler, Stephen Goff. Uh, please, again, use the uh, click view link. So I will send you this PowerPoint and then you can get the link. And again, you just log in like you did before. It's about 45 minutes long, so you can skip the weather forecast, uh, which is the first chapter. And whilst watching it, you need to make notes on any formal sanctions Stephen faces informal sanctions he faces what opinions about his behavior do people express and what do you think 
about his behaviour. So you have three lessons worth there with different things to watch and engage yourself with. So please do just pace yourself as you need to, working through the material. And obviously any questions or problems, either email me or write a comment underneath and I'm more than happy to help. So hopefully all of that is clear. That is your first unit. So that's your first topic 1.1 on crime and deviance. Um, and then we will continue next week onto the next section thank you very much everybody um i'm just going to cancel you all down now fabulous thanks very much everyone bye for now